So one of the most important things you need in your flash photography is a way to mount your flashes and your modifiers to your light stand. There's a couple of reasons why this bracket in particular is so important. Firstly, it is a Bowens mount, which is the most universally accepted uh, type of mounting system for photography accessories and video too, I suppose, but any softbox, you know, dish, octabox, snoot, whatever, you can find a affordable and professional version to fit a Bowens mount or even any system, you can actually adapt the speed ring to fit in the Bowens mount here. Another reason it's so important is because it's gonna take the pressure off the hot shoe. So in the past, I mentioned we use something like an umbrella bracket. When you're doing that, you're actually mounting your flash by the little metal foot on the bottom of the flash to the stand. So depending on what you've got on the front of the flash, you are gonna be putting a lot of pressure on that very small point of the flash. So it's gonna take the pressure off that and it's gonna open you up to a whole suite of different accessories that you wouldn't have had access to otherwise. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using accessories that use the umbrella shaft to mount to your flash. And in fact, this bracket actually comes with an umbrella mount in it as well. But to be honest, in the professional world, no softboxes really use that mount anyway. You're pretty much limited to just umbrellas. As another added benefit, you can also use the bracket like this with a slightly larger but still very small portable flash like the AD200 with Godox, which is one of the most popular small flashes in the world. This is my absolute favorite accessory at the moment. It's a quick release Octobox, but the way it sets up and packs down is absolutely genius. I've never seen this system anywhere before, but I'm gonna try and get all of my modifiers like this in the future. I have a much more expensive, you know, bigger, beautiful, nicely shaped Octobox that I like to use for my photo shoots. But to be honest, the way that you set it up and the way that you have to force it down, you feel like you're gonna break it. And when you release it, it snaps back so hard, you hurt your knuckle or your finger every single time. This one is effortless and it's almost indestructible. I'm not sure if the struts are plastic or fiberglass, but when it's clicked in, if it was to tip over, it wouldn't break. I'm, I'm sure of it. it. It just feels so sturdy and secure. And whereas the more expensive ones have like the aluminum rib on the inside, if they were to go over, they literally just snap and then the shape of your Octobox is ruined forever. I have the 65 centimeter model and I think this is the perfect size for a lot of reasons. In particular, if you're doing a portrait of one person, it's the perfect size because if you get it nice and close like it is to my face now, it's a beautiful soft light, it wraps around, it's got two layers of diffusion inside it, but if you wanna get it a little bit further away or perhaps use it as a rim light or just a little bit of a kick or, or you know fill in a scene, you can get sort of a medium to hard light out of it as well. So I think this is extremely versatile. This is what I've been using for all my environmental portrait shoots and I absolutely love it. The price point is amazing. I've actually seen since I've purchased this, the price has crept up a little bit. So I think because of how popular that this accessory is getting, I think they've started to notice and they've started to increase the price a little Little bit but at around $75 Australian and I think that works out to be about $50 US it is an absolute no-brainer I'm gonna get this in a bunch of different sizes um, but this is my favorite size at the moment this next tiny extremely affordable accessory can completely transform your images in fact I think this might be the best dollar for dollar buy that you can possibly get for a small flash these are sets of flash gels which are basically tiny pieces of plastic that you put in front of the bulb of your flash that change the color of your light. So why is this important? Depending on the situation that we go in, sometimes we want to match the color of our lighting to the color of the ambient light in the room. Let's say you're in a room with lots of tungsten or orange colored light. If you use a flash that is balanced with a CTO, we call it a color temperature orange gel, you can match it in so the flash actually blends in with what the environment looks like. That means that you're not shooting in an orange room with basically a white light flash that looks like you've lit something artificially. These are basically just little pockets that you can load these little plastic colored strips into and they have velcro so you can attach them onto the front of your flash just like that. These are so affordable and in fact, a lot of flashes that you buy on Amazon now will come with these with them included, but because they are so cost effective, I would get one, at least one for every flash that you own, if not two, because the way I actually like to do it is preload my favorite colors into these little slips so I have them ready to go at all times. And then just in case, if I do need something different on the day, it's very easy to just pull out the little gel and swap to a different color. 
And then as easy as that, whatever environment you're going to, you're gonna have perfectly balanced, natural feeling light. Or alternatively, you can go nuts with the colors and have very creative, dynamic, colorful, interesting images. The sky is the absolute limit. What a no brainer. Grab one, in fact, grab five of these sets, you won't regret it. Most manufacturers now make and sell their own lithium batteries specific to the model of flash that you use. These function really well, the batteries work great, but they are expensive and it means that every type of light you have, you need to have a different type of battery. It's a nightmare. For this reason, I highly recommend buying flashes that take AA batteries. Take a look at the link below. I've left a link for my favorite all-time off-camera flash that runs off AA batteries. It's around $60 US and it absolutely rips. I've tested dozens of brands of double A's in my time and these are my absolute favorite pick. They're affordable and reliable and very available as well. These batteries in particular are a high capacity NIMH battery that stands for nickel metal hydride. That basically means that these batteries will deliver a very consistent voltage across the life of their charge cycle. You'll get a quicker and more consistent flash throughout the life of the entire battery. Alkaline batteries, for example, perform excellently straight out of the packet when they're fully charged, but the performance drops off steeply after that. that means you'll have to wait longer and longer for your flash to recycle. You can also recharge them hundreds of times and even if they sit in your bag unused for up to a year, they will hold around 80% of their charge. Another pound for pound contender for what might be the most important accessory to achieve consistent professional results is a gray card. I personally have this little Calibrite color checker here, which is fantastic, but it's around $200. The gray card on the screen now does the same job, but it costs $8. If you're not familiar, a gray card is a very handy little tool that has the feature of being specifically 18% gray. 18% gray basically means that this is the color that your camera will perceive as perfectly between white and black. If you have this in your shot, you're basically telling your camera that you can use it as a reference to color balance or perfectly meter your light. It's really easy to do. Once you're all set up with your lighting, you just need to pop this in one of your test shots and then later on in your photography software of choice, you grab the eyedropper tool and you just click on the gray color and it will automatically color balance accordingly. It's the best way to get a consistent color balance every time. This one personally lives in my own camera bag, but I've just ordered one of the cheaper ones and that's gonna live forever in my off-camera flash case, so I'm never without a gray card. If you don't have the floor space for a flash or you don't want your light stand to be seen in a shot, this little guy will get you out of all sorts of sticky situations. You can basically attach it to anything. It has a hole here for a spigot, which means you can mount it directly to a light stand and then you know, in the jaws, you could hold something, a flash, a reflector, basically anything, as, as wide as you can go. It is an extremely secure way to hold something. Or alternatively, you can use the jaws on the light stand and then put a spigot in and mount a flash directly onto the spigot. One example might be if you're shooting some environmental portraits and you don't want your flash in the scene, you could easily clamp this onto a beam in a roof and then point a flash down for some little, you know, rim light or some extra just ambient lighting. It also has one quarter and three eighth threads on the bottom, which means you can literally mount it to anything. You could stick it on a tripod, you could add a magic arm or something like that to it. There are plenty of third party options in all different shapes and sizes, but you wanna make sure you get this particular style. And there's a couple of brands that make them that will be a lot cheaper than the actual Manfrotto one. Check out the link below. I'll have it all there linked in the description so you won't have to hunt for it. A snoot is incredibly underrated. This is the accessory you need if you wanna get those trendy hard light product photography shots that you see everywhere at the moment. This thing is basically the opposite of a softbox. What it does is it takes your flash and it focuses it down to a very narrow area. Personally, I love to use this as a rim light because to be honest, you don't want the lighting from the back bouncing around the room and creating all sorts of different shadows. This way, you just get a very small focused beam exactly where you want it to go. This is the quickest, easiest way to create hard light anywhere. And it's also a really good way to create those very trendy point and shoot style portraits that you've probably seen over the last couple of years, just hard light straight onto the face of your subject. Definitely check out the link below for this model in particular. It comes with an optional removable honeycomb grid for an even tighter, more focused beam of light. If you pair this with the quick release Octobox that I mentioned earlier in the video, you have an absolutely killer two light small flash setup. This next one is a bit of a bonus if you're like me and shoot the Godox 8200 or 8200 Pro. This silicon bumper is an absolute no brainer. If you're like me and you spend a lot of the time shooting solo without an assistant, at some 
some point on a set, your light is gonna get knocked over and it's gonna hit the ground. Um, for me, recently I did a shoot at a skate park with a skateboarder and I'm so glad that I had the bumper on because my flash went over, it crushed my beauty dish, but my valuable electronics were all safe because of this silicon bumper. It also doubles as a stand, which is really cool because this is something that I often do with a small flash. Let's say I'm shooting some band promos. I've got four or five band members lined up. With a speed light, you just sort of fold it up and sit it on the ground, but with this guy, it's a very stable, secure stand and it's not gonna fall over and you get that beautiful little separation in the back. I've just put a video on screen now. If you're interested in the off-camera flash content, check it out. It's a really cool behind the scenes photo shoot using a lot of the gear you've seen in this video.